हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल ड्रॉप अ लाइक शेयर एंड कमेंट टुडे इज ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नंबर थ्री ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑफ सर कैलाश चंद्रज वॉल्यूम नंबर फिफ्टीन ऑन द स्पीड ऑफ अंडर वर्ड्स पर मिनट स्टार्ट मिस्टर डेप्यूटी चेयरमैन दिस इज ओनली एन अमेंडिंग बिल एंड द टाइम इज ऑल्सो वेरी शॉर्ट so i cannot take up all the industries separately but i shall confine myself to a few observations last year also in this house by about this time we discussed another tariff amendment bill in connection with that i made certain observations as well as suggestions for the government but i do not find that any attention has been paid to these suggestions my suggestions were to this effect that when any bill for granting protection or discontinuing protection to an industry was brought we should be supplied with certain information under three categories the first information was whether the protection granted to an industry had been used only by the indigenous industry or advantage of the protection had been taken by foreign capital entrenched in that industry because sir i submit that the main purpose of granting protection to certain industries is to develop our national industries but if it is found that taking advantage of the protection foreign capital goes into those fields where the industry is not highly developed or it does not involve a huge outlay of capital or huge outlay of machinery the protection becomes a farce my second category of suggestions was that when protection was granted to an industry it should be seen how far that industry was progressing properly and also how far it was taking steps to lighten the burden on the consumers thirdly when we are granting protection to certain industries we have the right to demand of that industry that it should give a fair deal to its own labor i suggest that when notes are circulated to us in connection with a tariff amending bill we should be supplied that information on these various counts particularly these three lastly i would like to make another point in connection with the soda ash industry the question of this industry was discussed thoroughly on the floor of the house last year the fact is that i gave certain suggestions and also drew the attention of the house to certain peculiar features connected with this industry the domestic production is still far less than the actual domestic demand that is why import of soda ash is being allowed but it was complained that licenses for importing soda ash were given to the imperial chemical industries secondly imperial chemical industries is a world monopoly and serious allegations were made against that concern not only by us but also by those indian gentlemen who are engaged in the soda ash industry that that concern taking advantage of its monopolistic position was maneuvering the price of that commodity in such a manner as to put the indian indigenous industry in very serious difficulties 
द ओनली ग्राउंड और क्राइटेरियन ऑन विच द लाइसेंस वॉज गिवन टू इम्पीरियल केमिकल इंडस्ट्रीज फॉर इम्पोर्टिंग सोडा एश वॉज दैट फॉर अ नंबर ऑफ ईयर्स इट वॉज द ग्रेटेस्ट इम्पोर्टर बट इफ वाइल ग्रांटिंग प्रोटेक्शन टू अ नेशनल इंडस्ट्री वे लुक एट थिंग्स इन सच अ मकैनिकल एंड सुपरफिशियल वे इट डिफीट्स द वेरी पर्पज फॉर विच पार्लियामेंट इज एनैक्टिंग दिस पीस ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन अबाउट दीज थिंग्स आई हैव नो इंफॉर्मेशन एज टू वट इज द प्रजेंट पोजिशन whether these suggestions were considered whether the matter was looked into whether any investigation was undertaken and if so with what result on these matters we have not been supplied with any information therefore i agree to some extent with my honorable friend Mr Kishan Chand that we are confronted with some tariff amending bills in installments these bills are presented before us as necessity arises but while they come to us we do not have the total picture before us whatever information is given is of a very general nature and superficial and it does not really help us to understand the real position as regards those points which i have made out mr deputy chairman as the time is short i should like to confine myself to two or three observations first and foremost in addition to certain information being given to members who are interested in the subject it is necessary when the export advisory council meets twice a year that invitation should be given to such members to attend these meetings the government itself will benefit by the members listening to the view points put by those people who are in the trade i had made this observation with regard to education advisory boards and every other body that members of both houses should be informed about the meetings of such bodies and they should be allowed to attend them as spectators they will not take part in the proceedings but there could be nothing lost as far as both the government and the members are concerned by the members being allowed to attend their meetings secondly though this may not be exactly the occasion to deal with it i want to put to the honorable minister this point and seek his advice